official wrap up part of the festival, but uh, I don't know. Sorry, Stan, you had to follow uh, all this. They were absolutely <laughs> fantastic. That was great. So I'm going to introduce the movie really quick. I think they have another show happening up on Queen Anne, and I might just run up there and see. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, tonight uh, we are in 1959. We are reaching the end of the 1950s, uh, and what unites our two uh, films you're about to see is that the filmmakers who made these are uh, making some rather pertinent and timely statements about race in America. Uh, in 1959, you couldn't get away with a lot of stuff on the big screen. Uh, Sam Fuller, however, uh, did things his own way. If you were here uh, last weekend when we showed Pick Up on South Street, you heard me give my uh, always impassioned introduction about Sam Fuller and how uh, not only is he one of my favorite filmmakers, but he is flat out my favorite American of the 20th century. Uh, nobody else in 1959 was going to make a movie uh, about the Nisei experience in America and a Japanese American uh, serving on the LA police force who falls in love with a Caucasian woman and is a rival for her affection with his white partner. Only Sam Fuller is really going to make that movie. Uh, he was the first guy to make a movie about Vietnam, China Gate, uh, which he made before this, and he cast Nat King Cole, not as a nightclub singer, mind you, which you've seen several times this week, but he actually cast him in a lead role as a soldier uh, fighting in Vietnam, and uh, it was a fantastic performance. So, so Sam was always out there on the leading edge, trying to be provocative as befits his... Uh, upbringing as a newspaper man, uh, and his style was always very punchy and provocative, as the opening of the movie you are about to see will attest, um, and it's just a fantastic film. Nobody did action quite like Sam Fuller. There's a kendo match in the middle of this film that is one of the most kinetic, exciting things that any filmmaker had done at that time, uh, and it's just a very, very powerful film. Uh, the stars, James Shigeta, who, who was probably the leading Japanese-American actor in movies at this time, Flower Drum Song and other things, but this was the part that he always loved, uh, and at the end of his career he said, you know, this was the movie that he really uh, appreciated above all the other stuff that he had done. Uh, good performances, too, from Victoria Shaw, who's not an actress that we're too familiar with. Uh, and Anna Lee, who plays an artist in this film, you're probably most familiar with her from The Sound of Music, maybe. Uh, but Sam always wrote great parts for women in his films, as this will attest. So this is just the first half of what is a really dynamite double bill tonight. Uh, I hope a lot of you are going to stick around for the second feature, Odds Against Tomorrow, which is one of my favorite movies ever, uh, and is even in some ways more powerful than The Crimson Kimono. So I want to give one last shout out to uh, to Voltes for that performance. That was really spectacular. Uh, we're going to see a little more for less uh, to start this movie, and I guarantee you in 1959, uh, performances like what you saw from Voltes were not uncommon in 1959, but I guarantee you that the women were not running the show in those performances, so it's very nice to see this uh, woman-owned and operated uh, truth uh, that we saw tonight. I think they're absolutely fantastic. So thank you very much. Enjoy the Crimson Kimono, and we'll see you back here for the official close of Noir City. Thanks.